Hey y'all, in today's video let's talk about change tracker in Entity Framework Core. So this video assumes that you worked with the library before, but you may not know how it works exactly under the hood. So between your database layer and your code lies change tracker layer that keeps track of everything that you change in your uh, code and uh, knows exactly what to update into your database once you call your save changes. But how it's done. So every entity model is decorated with additional properties, but the most important one is the state. The state indicates the action that should be taken on your save changes. So when you instantiate a new entity model, it won't know if it should be propagated to your database. So once you call your save changes, it won't be added to your database. That's why you have to specify it via the add method here. Once you call your add method on your DB context, it will know that this entity should be saved once you call your save changes. And that's why the state changes to add it. So the save changes are called and the database is updated and your entity gets the state uh, unchanged. So upon another call on save changes, your change tracker will know that the database is already aware of your new entity model and will not send it back again. A similar flow is apply when you want to delete an entity from your database. So you query for it in your database and it gets to you and underneath it has the state unchanged. So once you call remove on your DB context, it will know that it should flag it as deleted. And once you call your save changes, it will know that it should propagate it into your database and then it gets the state of detached. So right now it won't be tracked anymore and any further calls of save changes will not apply anything to your database. So now you may assume that the update works similar to removal on and create. You query for it, you call update on your change tracker and then you save changes. But it's not so easy and update is special in that regard. So as you may know, if you want to speed up your queries, you may apply as no tracking to your query. Therefore, it will skip your change tracker. So as shown here, it will not instantiate it in that case. So we get your entity model and this entity model should be used only for queries. So uh, I, either you show it to your client or you send it or just save it into your file, anything, but you shouldn't update any properties because now your change tracker is not instantiated. And once you call your change property value, the change tracker will not set the flag appropriate to your change. So once you call your save changes, it will not know what change about your entity or even that it exists. So it will not know and it will not propagate any changes made to such model. And this is the sole case for the update in your DB context. So if you have your, a bunch of updates in your code, you should really uh, investigate if they are really needed because they are coming with a very big downside to them. And we'll talk about it in a second. But let's investigate this flow right here. So we query for your entity model. You set it as no tracking, so no uh, change tracker is instantiated and you change some values in it. So how do you want, uh, so how do you propagate it into your database? Well, then you can call update on it and it will start tracking your model, but you will get no benefit from as no tracking because it need to create your change tracker anyway, and you will uh, go with a, a very big downside of the fact that you will not have the change tracker started right from the beginning. So you may miss your update. And when you call your save changes, no changes will be actually propagated. But now that you called your update, it will know that uh, the entity model should be propagated and since it knows that the idea exists in the database, it will know that it should be updated. So if update shouldn't really be ever needed, why does it exist? Well, you may send directly from your client your entity model or uh, synchronize it with some external service. So let's just assume that your case is valid. And in that case, when you're sending your entity model for your update, your change tracker wouldn't be aware of it and it wouldn't have any state assigned to it. So once you would call your save changes, it wouldn't know that it should propagate it in your, into your database. So that's why the update exists so that you may say, okay, this entity model exists. I promise you just try to propagate the changes that are made to it uh, with the update statement. So a very neat thing with the uh, change tracker is that it's scoped. So for every service that is retrieved, in one particular request, 
it will retrieve the same change tracker to it. And you may know that save changes is a very expensive call. And if you want to update your database from maybe one, two or three services, you would call save changes on all of them. But actually it is not needed because the change tracker is instantiated once for your request. So you may assume that it knows about every changes made in all of those services. So only, only the last service ever really needs to save your changes because they are all saved in your change tracker and are ready to be saved into your database until you close your request. So let's now jump into the code. And as you know, the change tracker is a very neat thing, but it's also very expensive to be instantiated. So in your case, when you just want to query your uh, database for something that you want to be displayed and not changed, you should use the as node tracking on your uh, DB set before you materialize your list. And then it will not instantiate anything other, other than your objects. So uh, once you call your tool list, uh, they are just in your memory, but not uh, with the change tracker. So they should perform much faster. So now let's go back to the update. So I've touched on the topic of the update being very dangerous and you may know that you should track your changes and you shouldn't use the update and that's all fine. But you may say, okay, but if update just says to my change tracker that something was modified and it was already modified, then it shouldn't be a big deal and this update is just redundant and can be left in. Apart from the fact that you're just calling a additional method, so it shouldn't be that costly. But there is a caveat with it. So if this is commented out and in my code I query for a book and I change the description because this is the update description handler, when I call my save changes, only the description will be actually updated. So the update statement will only update the description. But if I uncomment it out, uh, everything about the book will be changed, even though I changed only the description. As you may suspect, not only will it be slower performing in your SQL, but it, it can also lead to concurrency issues. So if you change your description from one of the endpoints and simultaneously you call some other endpoint that changes the title, for example, they will collide and it won't be resolved so easily. So you should really avoid your updates. So I configured my uh, database context with a logger factory that will allow me to see every request to my SQL in a raw form so we can see that in action. So now first example is without the update explicitly. And as you can see, I have my uh, endpoint to get all of the books. Let's query for my books. Okay, so I got two books and let's, oh, I see that the test three description is improper and I should update it. It should really be a test four. And as you may see, the update that was propagated to my SQL database is only the description here. Set description to P0. But now, once we uncomment my update, we may observe that if we update our book that was of the description test four to a test five, we can observe that every property was changed. So set cover type, description, language, page count, and published on and title. So as you see, it is much, much easier to just <laughs> leave your updates without the explicit update here. So hopefully you now see how the entity framework change tracker works. I think that there is an additional video to be made on this topic as well. So, we're, uh, so we can manipulate those properties ourselves and see how they behave. And I think that there's, there are a lot of videos on entity framework core in general that I think I should do uh, to just showcase how amazing this um, technology actually is and we all take for granted. So hopefully you enjoyed. And if you want to see more videos about entity fr framework, just let me know down in the comments. I thank you for watching and see you.